and get through a little bit here. And then we will, we will finish up tomorrow, okay? So lesson five is our last lesson in differentiation part two. Don't worry. Unit four is derivatives too, so, you know, we're not done. It's more applications. Derivatives is one third of our class. However, I think we spend more time on them definitely than limits. So, okay. So today it's specific, specifically derivatives of inverse trig functions. You have two options. You can memorize them or you can know how to derive them. Okay. Um, honestly, the more we use them, the more you become familiar with them. For me, obviously I've been through AP Calc. I know them, but I'll be honest. When was the last time I worked with inverse trig functions and derivatives? It's been a bit. So I always have to refresh my memory because that's one of those, some of the basics I stick in my head. Some of them I have to refresh my memory. This is one of them. But after doing the notes and doing the homework, okay, they're there now. So it is, they are memor memorizable, if that's a word. Okay. So we can take the derivative of an inverse trig function using the ratios of a right triangle and implicit differentiation. That's what we're going to do on this page. We're going to go through sine, cosine, and tangent that way. But then when we do our examples, we'll just apply the rule that we know. Okay? So given y equals sine inverse of x, find the derivative of sine inverse of x. Now, inverse functions. What do we know about ordered pairs and inverse functions? If it's x, y in the regular function, then... The inverse function is yx, right? Or what we can look at here, y equals sine inverse x. Think from pre-calc last year. Sine of what equals what? Sine of y is equal to x. Do you remember how sine inverse will take sine and switch the input and output? That's what's happening right here. So if you have y equals sine inverse of x, an equivalent statement would be to say sine of y is equal to x. Now, I want to refer to this triangle here. Sine of y is an angle, yes? When we take the sine of something, that is an angle. So here is angle y. And if you think about this in terms of sine of y is equal to x. What is x as a fraction? x over 1, correct? And what is our ratio for sine? What do we know about sine? Sine is what over what? Opposite of hypotenuse. Opposite of hypotenuse. Have we talked about that yet this year? Okay. So sine is... Opposite over hypotenuse, in case you've forgotten. So sine of y is x over 1, correct? How could you find that third side if you had to? Pythagorean theorem, yes. So if we're trying to find, if I call this a, a squared plus x squared equals 1 squared, right? Are you seeing how that bottom side is going to be the square root of 1 minus x squared? a squared is 1 minus x squared. So a is the square root of 1 minus x squared, right? Now, I'm just showing you this because the triangle is already provided for you. I want you to understand that you know where this triangle comes from if I show it to you, right? You know that sine is opposite over hypotenuse. You know how to do Pythagorean theorem. You've been doing that since algebra one. That's basics. Okay. So that's the idea of using properties of right triangle trigonometry there. We're going to differentiate now. Okay. So this is what we just came off of. What is the derivative of sine y? And I guess I'm going to write here that we are taking the derivative with respect to x, right? Actually, you know what? I'm going to go down and do that below because I don't really have room right there on the other side. So we're going to do the derivative 
of sine y and the derivative of x with respect to x. What is the derivative of sine y with respect to x? Derivative of sine of something is cosine of something times derivative of y with respect to x, right? Because remember when you're doing derivatives and it's not explicitly solved, it's implicit because there's a y within the problem. Derivative of sine of something is cosine of something times the derivative of y, which is just 1, but dy dx. What's the derivative of x? 1. Now we're going to solve for dy dx. So dy dx is going to be 1 divided by cosine y, yes? Why did we have to do like the dy dx? Because when we're differentiating, it's with respect to x. But, so when we already have something explicitly solved, that is y equals, and we're just taking the derivative of everything else, it's all in terms of x. But keep in mind, when we say y, we write then y prime. Okay, so anytime we're doing the derivative with respect, derivative of y with respect to x, we need to multiply by that dy dx. So okay. the derivative of x something with respect to x is the thing. Right. Or you could write, every time you do a derivative of x, you could write dx dx after it. But dx dx is just a fraction of 1 that's going to cancel. Okay. Now, we're not going to leave it in this form. Okay. Cosine of y. Can I find the cosine of y using this handy-dandy triangle over here? What do you know about cosine? Okay. Cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. So what's the cosine of y going to be? Square, okay. square root of 1 minus x squared over 1, which is just square root of 1 minus x squared. If we use that information down here, then our derivative is instead of 1 over cosine y, what is cosine y equal to? Square root of 1 minus x squared. That is your derivative of sine inverse of x. Okay, and we'll work with that. We'll practice with that tomorrow. Now, cosine inverse is going to be very similar. Let's see what we can do with it. You guys have what you need here? Yes? No? I didn't even hear the keys busting in there. Let me bring in your calculator. Okay. Thank you. Hopefully, I, got, I don't remember how many you gave me. I think 11. Good. That's what I got. Yay. Okay. Did you have three girls show up really late this morning? Yep. Okay. Well, like five or ten, about ten or fifteen. Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay. Yep. I had to run them out of the hallway. They didn't know where to go. They right. said, we normally go to Heinz Center. We don't know where to go for the PSAT. I'm just the for the I know. All right. Thanks. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's who you were texting this morning? Yes. Standing in the hallway on their phone. Where do we go? Where, we normally go to Heinz Center. Where do we go for PSAC? The school's not yeah, that sorry. big. Sorry, that's where I struggle as a teacher. Like, hello? It's been announced. Mr. Fernandez, come and talk to all of you. It's been announced this morning. Yeah. Okay. So, I'm not how, sure how far we're going to get in this question now, but we'll see what we can do with it. Okay, cosine inverse of x is what we're being asked to find. First of all, if it says y equals cosine x, what do you know? Cosine of 
y equals x, right? If y equals cosine inverse x, then cosine of y equals x. We're going to take the derivative here of both sides. We're going to do the derivative of cosine y, and we're going to do the derivative of x. What is the derivative of cosine of something? Negative sine of something times the derivative of something. Well, derivative of y is just 1, but then times dy dx. Derivative of x is 1. Solve that. And I have dy dx is going to be 1 divided by negative sine of y. Now, do you realize this triangle looks different than the last one? But that's because our starting information was different. Yes? We started with cosine of y is x, so x over 1. So there's cosine of y adjacent over hypotenuse, x over 1. This third side would be found using Pythagorean theorem, right? I don't need to redo Pythagorean theorem. Now, we're being asked for sine of y. What's sine of y going to be? Opposite over hypotenuse. So square root of 1 minus x squared over 1, which for the importance matter, it's square root of 1 over x squared. So dy dx is I mean, somewhere you need the negative, right? Negative of 1 over square root of 1 minus x squared. That is the derivative of cosine inverse. What's the difference between sine inverse and cosine inverse? A negative. So if you can memorize sine inverse, then you know cosine inverse. Did I make a mistake? Can you go back to the last one? Yes. Is the dy dy a mistake? Right. Yeah, that should be a dy dx. My gosh, I can't get it erased, though. Okay, thank you. I don't, why would I write that? I don't have an answer. No, that, that was a valid question. Okay, anything else? Okay, tomorrow we'll do tangent, and then we will work on using the rules. Okay? They take a little practice to get used to how to use them, but they're doable. Thank you.